looking for something elevated that he can drive to the outfield. And there is one to left, and Matthew Barefoot. Here comes the runner, Packard. He will score, standing up for the first run of the game, and the Pirates are on the board. RBI for Jake Washer. He wasn't fooled. His 54th RBI of the season. With just an excellent at bat right there by Washer. Exactly what I said. He wanted something up in the zone that he could drive to the outfield. That ball's hammered out to left, but right at barefoot. And Packer just cruising in from third base. Strikeout against Quinnipiac from Tucson, Arizona. Defensively, you're going to see Tyler Brown, the Turner Brown, excuse me, the second uh, shortstop for ECU. He's playing right behind the runner at second base. So he can hold Matthew Barefoot close. The left center field, and this is business. He's going to roll all the way to the track, and Justin Harris sending both runners around. One run scores. Jimenez to the plate. He scores. And Packard to third. Spencer Packard. The big blow and a two-run, run-producing triple. Well, you see the excitement of the Campbell fans. And ECU all tournament long has been playing shallow. Look where the center fielder's playing, very shallow. And that ball's hit past him all the way to the wall. And Worrell just has to cut that thing off right on the track. And that allowed two runs to come around and score. And Packer to advance all the way to third base. And the Campbell... Third base and pitcher, it's pretty good talent right there. Defensively, the Camels are going to concede the run up the middle. And that should be deep enough. We'll see. Let's we'll see if barefoot wind helped the cause. Here comes the runner, Lloyd, to home. It's a high throw, and it is the tying run. You're shaking your head. You're thinking as an old outfielder, he can make that throw home, but the wind took it. Yeah, I think he had a chance. He just let that one fly a little too much in the speed of Lloyd. Thought it was going to be a little closer than that, but just enough power out there by Giles, the third baseman. You know, Barefoot did a good job as far as trying to stay behind that. Packard. This guy was a triple crown in the AAC last year. Did it all. Named to five preseason All-American squads. Well hit to center. Win wreaks havoc with it. Whirl around third. He will score easily. Stand-up double for Bryant Packard. His 38th RBI, and the Pirates lead by one. I think you called it, John. The wind took that ball away from Ricka. It's blowing from right to left, and it's blowing pretty hard. Packer knew he hit it well, but Ricka, I think at this point right there, a little bit of a bad route. He was kind of running straight towards center field and had to kind of make a left-hand turn. I think if he makes this. Again, Ricka, the center fielder, he's challenging Whirl. He's got a lot of power, but still playing shallow. Gets by Zach Minnick. Here comes Washer in to score. And there's the fourth run of the game for ECU. Four to two, Pirates. That was actually Brickhouse coming in to score on that run. But again, another power curve spiked by Wyatt Tyson. And no chance really for Minnick to try. Power threat, he has nine home runs. Fisted to left. Godwin sending the runner around third. No throw and another run for ECU as Packard shaking his head a little bit, running gingerly. We'll see if that's an issue in the next couple of innings, but it's a five to two lead. He's been battling some injuries. We really haven't been told what they were and struggled at the plate. In a few of the games, yeah, he, he crossed home plate like he pulled something or something didn't feel right, quite right. Burleson helping his own college participant, our producer Josh Littlejohn. Great crew doing bang up work throughout the Greenville Regional as Chandler Jenkins lines one and takes the wide turn, headed to second, and he is safe. 
Oh, he did a little dance. It wasn't the safety dance that they were doing in the stands moments ago, but man, that was a missed opportunity for Campbell. Boy, Anshaw, he just was really nonchalant with that tag. That's a really good play by Matthew Barefoot. Watch him hustle over, cut this ball off, comes in and throws a dart to second base, and watch how chill Nanchu is. He's dead to rights. He's not. That's not even a close play. But yeah, he, a lot of contact there, and because he can see, he's right in front of him. So he get a huge secondary lead for him. And that is by Anshaw into right center. One run across. Jenkins scores easily, and the second run is in, and it's a seven to two ball game. Bryson Royal crossing after Jenkins. Two runs for Brian Packard. He's three for three. Well, at the infield drawn in, there's no chance for Anshaw. But again, look at the difference of this inning. No. You see that ball hit right there? I think it's still probably going to be a base hit up the middle if Anshaw's playing back. But two runs easily score for the Pirates. And boy, their offense. State had 65, ECU had 62. And chopped over the head of the first baseman, Collins. Big turn by Packard at second. Thrown into the infield by Grant Harris. Runners at first and third. The thunderous ECU lineup continues. I just kind of sums up of what's happening for ECU. You entice a chopper if you're Campbell, and it chops over the first baseman's head. That's a ball that should be a ground out to first, and with the first baseman having to hold that runner, it's only the top of the fifth, but that momentum, especially with this crowd, is really in ECU's favor. Burleson down the line at third. Here comes another one across from Packard. Cliff Godwin sending the runner around third to score another. And it's nine to two. Turner Brown, Brian Packard scoring on Alec Burleson's two run double as he helps his own cause once again. Well, that's just an amazing job of, of hitting by Alec Burleson. That's not a bad pitch, but watch where he takes it, right down the third baseline. The third baseman is not that far off the line, and I don't think he could have rolled it down the third baseline any better. See, Packer just... Oh, that's a, that's a like diplomatic the, the, answer. It's a Reggie Jackson home run that cleared the fence by about four feet and went over the lights and just came almost straight down. <laughs> To the right center gap. Minnick is in business. Flying around third. Here comes Grant Harris to score standing up with a third run of the game for Campbell and a double for Zach Minnick, his 41st RBI. Just an outstanding job of hitting right there by Minnick. That is a ball up in the zone. That's what he waited on. He had the hitters count 3-1 and he delivers to right center. And just too much speed for Jenkins to get that ball in quick enough to keep that run from scoring. To Brady Lloyd with some English on the ball, but he secures it for the third out. So runners left on. Good job by Lanier out of the pen. That's a six run deficit. I'm ready for him to take a hack. This guy, he does not get cheated at the plate. There it is. Deep to left. Are you kidding me? We called it. <laughs> right on cue, Jake Washer. Thanks very much, Jake Washer. Boy, it's nice to have when somebody makes you look good. Are you playing the lottery tonight? <laughs> Why not? That guy needs to be our first stop in between games. That ball was crushed out to right field. Excuse me, left field. Wow. He has not been fooled throughout the regional. You got to love taking that really wide turn right there. Seventh home run in his last seven games. Oh, and it's 1-2.
Good majority of this crowd of over 4,600 has left the building, gearing up for game two, but here comes the one-two pitch. He got him swinging. Garrett Saylor, the strikeout of Colin Wolf, and that does it. The 200th career win for Cliff Godwin, memorable as his ECU Pirates remain alive in their quest to reach the Super Regionals. It's almost like they needed the wake-up call that loss in the first game. They have been just like...